Hey, what is up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. In this video, we're going to look at how to pull this API endpoint data into the front end of the site that we've been building out. So the first thing I need to do is start back up my dev server. So I'm going to say Netlify dev. We did this last time. Uh, so if you have questions about how to do that, go ahead and check out the last video. It's going to pull everything in and then go ahead and open up the local endpoint. Now, in this case, it's opening this up since I'm already on localhost 888. Let me grab this and open it up separately over here. So this is what we've got going. Now what I want to do is replace this data with the data that we created last time in the serverless function. So I want to actually parse through this data and populate the UI. So we're going to do that uh, just by coming into our main.js file. And this is something that Vite scaffolds out for us. Uh, and what we're going to do is just create an async function. Now the nice thing is when we actually build this script, and I'll show you this in a little bit, uh, Vite will compress this and rename our variables and our function names and stuff like that. So we can be really descriptive, not worrying about space or anything like that, and just let Vite.js take care of that. So I can come in here and say like uh, data, or let's say pull, how about fetch data from API endpoint or something like that, all right? And then I can just write my function right in here. Let's go ahead and call it right away. So fetch data from API endpoint. And then I can say whatever I want. And when we finally use the build script or when Netlify builds it for us using the build script, it will rename all this to be shorter. So I can come in here. Let's first of all, go ahead and just grab the data we've gotten. So I'm gonna call it cards and then we will await our fetch here. And I can just say forward slash API forward slash fetch notion. So it's a relative path. And by using the uh, Netlify CLI, I don't have to worry about cores or things like that. It's all pulling in, recognizing I'm in a dev environment here. Then I'm going to say then, and what we want to grab is the response. Let's space this out on the next line just for readability here. I'm going to grab the response, and I want to say uh, response.json, and then let's do another dot then, and we'll come down to another line here. We want to grab uh, the data, and we want to pass that to, let's just go ahead and say console dot log data like that okay so let's save that and i'm going to come over here and open up the terminal and or the console and you see here i'm getting the results uh, that i got from an api endpoint now i just need the results and this is an object so what i can do is just say data dot results like that and i should now just get the array of four items so that's what i want obviously i don't need to console dot log it though so let's get rid of this but i can use that now to populate the ui and the thing I want to populate is uh, this area right here. So all these articles, uh, I want to replace them. And I'm going to put them all inside this card container. Let's go ahead, though, and let's get rid of most of these just so we can kind of see it work in real time. Let's see. I'll leave one like that. And then let's go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to use this as a template in the JavaScript file. So I'll save that. And then let's come in here. So the first thing we need to do is grab... Uh, the div that all this is held in, actually, I think it's a main tag, that card container that we just looked at. And then what we want to do is set the inner HTML, the inner HTML, and this will replace whatever we've got there to our cards. That's the array that we grabbed here from the fetch. Uh, and then we're going to map over that. Now, mapping is going to return to us an array. And so what I'm going to do is say for each card, here's what I want to do. Uh, in backticks, I basically want to interpolate essentially each of the cards from Notion that I'm pulling in. And all we need to do now is replace each of these with uh, the data that we're getting. Now, I went ahead and left up this API endpoint because it's easier to view it here, obviously. But all the things live inside properties, and then you just give it the name of whatever the property is. So let's come in here, and I'm going to grab all of these. We'll just do it all at the same time. Uh, name. We need that as well the card content inside this paragraph tag. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, this URL and the button text. So for all of these, I'm just going to say dollar sign and then curly bracket will say card, which is the thing we're looping over dot properties. And then I'll close that off and we'll replace this with what we need for each of them. So for the image source, it would be dot image. You can see that down here and then dot files. And then it's the zero index. So the very first item there and then dot uh, let's see, external.url. So that will get me all the way down to here, kind of working my way down that branch. Now, both the alt tag and the title are going to be the same. So if I come down here, uh, it's dot, dot name like that, dot title. 
And again, this is an array now. So the first one, which is the only one, <laughs> dot uh, plain text. All right, we're just going to keep going for each of these. So we've got the card content now. And let's come back up this way. So dot content dot rich text. Again, it's the zero because now we're inside an array. And then dot plain text. Two more. So we need the actual link. And then I think this one's pretty easy. Yeah, so it's just dot link dot URL. And then the button text itself. Let's come down here. Will be dot rich text. And then again, it's zero. Oh, I, I need to go inside the button text first. So button text dot rich text dot zero or not dot zero, the zero index and then dot. Uh, let's come down here, plain text like that. So if I go ahead and save this, it might look like it's working. In fact, if I come over here, let's see, can't read properties of image. Well, all of these are properties, which isn't a thing. So let's go properties. All right, so now it's pulling in this data. And if I come over here, you see it's actually pulling all this in. It might look like it's working, but you might notice something weird, which is we've got these random commas. Uh, what's going on? In fact, if I come in here and inspect these, uh, let's see, you've got these random commas. Now, you might remember I said that map returns an array to us, and so we're just inserting this array as HTML. So what we need to do is actually join the array into a long string of text. So I'll say dot join after we're finished with grabbing that array and we'll join it on nothing, which will then get rid of those and actually just give us the cards in here. Now you might notice something, which is when I refresh, it kind of uh, is a little janky. And in fact, if I pull this down here, let's see, this is our original data. Yeah, so you see there's just the one and it kind of jumps oddly. And that's even made more noticeable if I change my network throttling to like slow 3G and we refresh, you see it actually pulls it in and then eventually it gets styling and then eventually it then jumps and adds all of our cards. So that's extra odd. So let's get rid of this. And that's why next time what we're going to do is write that skeleton loading so that it doesn't jump around quite as much. Last thing I want to do though is come over here and let's go ahead and close this down. And then I'm going to come over here and we're just going to send all these. We'll say finished all fetching and we'll add that we'll add all those things uh, and then commit them and sync them and then what netlify is going to do is it's going to watch that repo and if i refresh here i guess i should probably go into the site if i refresh here let's pull over you can see it's building in fact i can come in here and it should be building all of that stuff so that now this should be live at my site once this finishes all right, and it just finished up and Netlify is smart enough to actually use the build script. And so if I come back in here, let's actually come back up. Uh, let's preview the deploy. It's the same thing here. So it's actually pulling this in and you can see all that data is live. In fact, if I were to come over here, uh, let's go ahead and add an extra one here and let's just double check that it's actually working on the live site. So I should now have five and I do. All right, so cool. It's everything is working ex except for our little skeleton loading animation. I do want to come in here though and show you, let's look at the JavaScript, uh, what it did. So you can see what it did is rename, let's see, where's our function down here. It just renamed it to C. Uh, so you can see how, how uh, it compresses that for us. And so that's why we can name it whatever we want. And that's what Vite does out of the box, which is pretty cool. All right, so next time we're gonna work on that loading animation and then we're gonna call this project done. If you don't wanna miss that, make sure you subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Happy coding.